Hello, hello, I'm International Master Andrei Ostrovsky, and this is Learn from Chess Blitz live show, which gives you an opportunity to play against me and to learn something new about chess. If you are for the first time here, we play on leechess.org. You can find the spelling in the name of the live stream. Uh, you can go there and find me by nickname Mostrovsky and challenge me for a five minute game. As for the spelling of Mostrovsky, it is just the same like in a short link. Uh, that leads to my YouTube channel. You can find it uh, below my name and the phrase uh, support is welcome. It is bit.ly slash Mostrovsky. So if you want to improve your chess, I recommend you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I share a lot of uh, instructive stuff there. So uh, our topic today is uh, well-coordinated pieces. I will try to do everything to come up with a good coordination because a good coordination uh, is just a foundation for nearly everything in chess, so you can't really get the attack uh, without a coordination. You usually can't do anything without a good coordination. So this means that today, this Sunday edition, uh, Learn From Chess, please, I will play just normal positional chess. But we will see, everything depends on uh, what you do, actually, maybe you will force me to do something ugly. Uh, who knows? So, let's get to playing. I already have a challenge, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is here. So, waiting for other challenges. Just go to leechess.org and challenge me for a five-minute game. So, I will take this first one. And I play with black pieces. E4, E5. So, let's, let's not deviate from... Uh, my normal openings, just to start with. Uh, and Rui Lopez. Is it an exchanged Rui Lopez? Yes, it is an exchanged variation, which damages the pawn structure on the queen side and uh, gives White an opportunity to get the pawn majority on the king side as a compensation for Black's pair of bishops. And vice versa is also true, so as a compensation for this damaged pawn structure, Black has now a pair of bishops. So after castling f6 is uh, probably the most uh, popular move. I usually play queen to f6 because uh, sometimes it gives me an opportunity to keep queens on the board and to come up with the uh, uh, attack on the king side. So d4, correct. I take on d4. Kravnik student appeared in live chat. Hello, my friend. Bishop g5 attacking my queen. And usually black has to go to d6 here, because if I go to g6, which uh, in fact uh, a better square for a queen, uh, immediately then after queen d4 there will be a threat of a checkmate on d8. So I will put my queen on d6 instead. And if white, for example, captures on d4 with the knight, then I play something like bishop to uh, d7 and uh, then maybe knight to e7, castles, and then at some point queen goes to g6. But okay, uh, white decided to take with the queen, uh, which gives me not so many options. So I will take the queen. Mm, and here is the question, what uh, did I achieve? Uh, because in fact I exchanged queens, right? Uh, but my pawn is still on f7, uh, which may be good for me, so I didn't play f6, so e6 is not weakened and uh, it gives me also some additional opportunities if compared to a classical f6 move uh, because for example later on i can try something like g6 move followed by bishop to uh, g7 uh, which uh, actually gives me a chance to activate my bishop of course it is not that great if you have already the pawn on f6 that's the difference all right but uh, at the moment i have to complete my development so i play bishop d7 I want to cast a long for this, uh, I will probably play something like knight e7, we'll see. <laughs> if you say hello, I, don I donate you. All right, hello, my friend. I sarp gt. You're welcome. And that goes to d2. Okay, white also keeps developing pieces, which is very natural. So now, 
Let's put the knight on e7, preparing castling, which was not possible because bishop g5 controlled the diagonal. So now it's possible. All right, so let's castle. If knight goes to e5, then I have e8 squared to go away with the bishop, so it's not very dangerous. But now there is a question how to continue my development. So knight is pinned. Mm, let's try to approach this bishop just to see where, where it goes. Maybe it will go away from the diagonal h4 d8. In this case, um, I will have a chance to move my knight e7 so it won't be pinned anymore. <laughs> so... All right, so bishop goes away from h4, d8 diagonal, which gives me a chance to move my knight if I want. Also, it gives me a chance just to play g6 followed by bishop g7, I guess. Is it a good idea or not? In this case, I will just uh, complete my development, because to be honest, at the moment, this knight e7 doesn't have perspectives. So probably this g6 followed by bishop g7 is a better idea. But we have to check. So if I play g6, knight goes to e5. All right, bishop goes to e8. So temporarily, uh, my bishop will be ugly, but probably it's not that dangerous. But with the help of g6, by the way, I control f5 square, uh, which limits slightly the activity of the knight d4. But okay, knight goes to b3 now, uh, most likely preparing bishop to d4. Yeah, that's why probably this idea of g6 and bishop g7 wasn't that great. Because if white manages to exchange dark squared bishops, okay, I no longer have a compensation for my bad pawn structure. On the other hand, I already played g6, so probably bishop g7 should be played. So let's do it. Good evening, Andre. Good evening, chess friends, says Twihosex. Hello, my friend. I'm happy you're here. Bishop goes to d4. All right, let's take it. I don't think that playing something like rook g8 protecting it would be better than that. And rook takes. Okay. So what about this move? So I create a positional threat of just taking on f3 damage in the pawn structure. In this case, my bad pawn structure on the queen side will be compensated with this bad pawn structure on the king side. Knight goes to e5. All right, looks like I have to go back to e6. Yeah, white is doing well here. If there is an exchange on d8, knight c5 will come. So let's control this c5 square as well. Limiting the activity of the knight b3 slightly. c6 is not handy because my knight e7 protects it, but in general, my position is kind of ugly here. I don't like it. I don't like it. A lot of unnecessary moves were made, I guess. But there is a potential that I would solve all these problems later. So c6 can be captured, but white decides not to do it. Okay, so maybe I should play this. Attacking the knight, intending to put my bishop on b1 and then to capture c2. All right, takes, goes here. Now here, the knight is under attack.
Now let's attack c2. And the king looks like very active here, and I attack c2. Yeah, just in time. To save my bishop and to fill. Very comfortable now. All right, so um, white was doing well, in my op opinion, uh, until the very, very end of the game. So this is a theory, of course, this bishop g5, queen takes d4, now takes bishop d7. Mm, but here, I guess, first of all, uh, it was slightly more interesting for me to uh, attack the knight immediately, maybe with the help of c5 move. Uh, just getting rid of this knight and preparing bishop to c6, just a normal thing uh, to activate the bishop. Um, that was the one idea, but okay, knight e7 can't be that bad. Uh, after knight f3, we can notice this slight problem with the e5 square. Uh, so it wasn't the case because of this bishop e8 idea. I mean, if white plays knight e5 here, I just play bishop e8, and there is this threat of f6. Uh, by the way, immediate f6 also deserves attention, but in this case, I don't win anything, I think, because of, um, first of all, unclear possibility of knight f7, but second of all, because of this simple knight d7, rook d7, and bishop to e3, protecting the knight on d4, so white is fine here. So bishop e8 should be played here, 100%, protecting the pawn, creating threat of f6, and attacking the knight on d4, most likely bishop e3. Uh, should be played here, where after I can try, for example, f6, getting rid of this knight, and then putting the bishop on f7, in which case uh, I slightly improve positions of my pieces, while white achieves nothing. So rook d1 was a correct move, um, and here after h6 and bishop e3, uh, probably uh, it was better for me to try uh, something like knight to g6 move, controlling e5 square, and preparing rook e8 with the attack against e4. So let's say if knight jumps to f5, which uh, I didn't want to allow, um, I guess I can simply play something like rook e8 counter-attacking the pawn on e4. And um, in this case, uh, white has some problems with protecting it. Uh, so maybe this deserved attention, because after g6, well, very good reaction, just knight to b3 preparing bishop to d4, and after bishop g7, bishop d4, uh, this bishop has been exchanged, which means that uh, I no longer have pair of bishops. This typical um, compensation for a bad pawn structure, and I slightly struggle here. So bishop g4 was another bad idea, because after knight e5, uh, well, I was forced back to e6. It was much better for me to start with the b6, just covering this c5 square, and maybe preparing c5 followed by bishop c6 or maybe knight c6. So there are different ideas after that. Mm, bishop g4, okay, knight to e5 was played, bishop e6, rook here, uh, b6 uh, exchange on d8, and now maybe knight d4 wasn't the best move. I'm not sure that uh, white mm, actually needs to give up this pawn on a2. Um, what to do instead of that? Probably just a simple centralization of the king could be an interesting idea. Just to play something like, I don't know, f3, let's say, to bring the king to e3 to start with, and only then to see what to do next. So I think uh, white should be just more than okay here because of the better pawn structure. So knight e4 gave me this chance. Mm, at least here, I guess, knight takes c6 should have been played immediately. So takes, takes, uh, let's say king goes to d7. I think I can do this because uh, if, for example, knight goes here, then after king c8, knight takes a6 and c5, I control b4 and the knight is trapped. So I can play king b7 next move, just winning the piece, right? And um, this means after king d7, the knight has to go away somewhere. And uh, let's say if knight goes to b4, Mm, I'm not sure, so probably I have to play bishop c4, and after b3, bishop to e2. Mm, and again, I should be just in time, after f3, I just play a5, let's say, and uh, if knight goes away somewhere, well, my bishop can't be trapped or something, so. 
Um, yeah. Interesting game, interesting position. So after b3, well, I think I am just fine with playing c5. Now, if knight takes f7, then I have king e8 attacking the knight. And the knight on d4 is still hanging, so I win some material instantly. So knight e6 uh, is a move. Uh, let's see if it is possible to play knight f3 instead. Because knight c6 is actually something that gives me temple play. But knight to f3 could have been interesting, because now if I play something like bishop b1, uh, there is knight e1 protecting this pawn. So after that, um, I think I have to do something like f6, attacking the knight. Uh, this knight goes to d3 or c4, to know what is better. After d3, I just play c4. And I manage to free my bishop, because after knight to c1, I have CB3, which looks very promising, but there is Knight to D2. Interesting option. So White somehow manages uh, to trap my bishop here. So CB3 is a threat, and my bishop has no squares. If I play B2, then Knight takes A2, and B1 square is controlled by the Knight D2. Of course, I have some compensation, but uh, I don't think it is sufficient. Maybe I can take on c2 here and uh, just to play with this four pawns uh, on the queen side, interest in position, but again, uh, it doesn't feel like it is a sufficient compensation. So after this knight c1, I have to be careful. Probably uh, bishop to b1 should be played forcing uh, knight to e1 if uh, white still wants to trap my bishop somehow. But at the moment, we can notice that there is no direct threat to this bishop, which is very good. So this bishop is placed not very, uh, not very uh, good, but uh, since there is no direct threat, uh, it is more or less safe. So I can try different things, including just uh, taking on b3 and playing, let's say, uh, a5, right? Yeah, or just bishop a2 now, because the diagonal becomes open. Yeah, uh, black should be safe here after taking this a2 pawn. I don't think there is a chance, a real chance for white to trap this guy. Uh, but definitely c5 wasn't correct. Uh, I mean, after c5, knight d6 wasn't correct, because this gives me just a temple play. I just attack everything here, and after knight d3, uh, I could have played c4, by the way. That was probably the safer way. But I also saw that after king e5 attacking e4, and create an additional threat of king d4, king c3, and so forth, I'm just fine with uh, my counterattack, and, well, I already win. All right, all right. Uh, here we go. So just let me know if the stream is fine, right? Uh, so if everything goes just okay with the picture, with the sound, and so forth. And we go to the next game. So, uh, let's play Aura Knight 1. Five minutes. Azura Mist is also here. Redix is here. Giovanni is here. Great to see you, guys. E4. E4. Okay, let's keep playing normal chess. Just E5. Knight F3 and Knight C6. Bishop to c4 now, so Italian game. Let's keep developing pieces. Bishop to c5, knight to f6, and d3. So, very calm opening line. Mm, here I usually play a6, just to prevent b4, followed by b5. Um, I can make this move a6 because white played d3, not d4. So didn't attack in the center, in fact. And here after a4, uh, I guess d6 is completely playable. So I just protect e5, prepare development of uh, my light script bishop. And waiting for uh, white's activity, white's plan. Knight to d2. So now there is no direct threat of playing bishop g5, and this gives me a chance to castle. Usually, uh, 
Well, h6 is a useful move to prevent bishop g5, but since the knight is on d2, I don't have to spend the time on it. Mm. But in the vast majority of cases, um, you still have to play h6 later just to prevent knight g5 or something. So let's start with the bishop e6. I like the idea of this move because first of all, I complete the development of my minor pieces. Second of all, I deal with uh, the most annoying piece. Now this bishop c4 is definitely the most active guy. So in my opinion, it's a good idea to neutralize it this or that way. Okay. Now I can protect the bishop with the rook e8. I can also play queen d7. Another idea just to go away with the bishop. Because sooner or later white will play at b4. And the bishop will have to move anyway. Why not to do this in advance? Also once the knight d2 goes away somewhere there is this sort of d4. So with my bishop on a7 it is no longer that dangerous and that forcing. Mm, to prevent bishop g4, not g5. No, I was talking about my h6, not about white's h3, okay? Rook e1. Preparing most likely knight to f1 maneuver, which is very typical here. Okay, I guess I can do this rook e8 move. being ready to recapture with the rook if necessary. Here when the rook is already on the eight, of course, taken with the pawn, well, was playable, but not very logical. And now, what to do now? I have an upper hand in development. I think it gives me the right to play uh, in a more aggressive way, I mean, to play d5. But with my queen still on d8, it's probably potentially not that cool because of queen b3 resource attacking b7. On the other hand, okay, if queen attacks b7, it's not necessarily hanging. So maybe I can play d5 right now. But if I play d5, there is something like bishop g5. So I will start with the h6. Bishop e3. All right. So I don't want to take on e3, helping white to complete the mission to bring the knight to e3 and then to fight for this f5 and d5 squares. On the other hand, if I don't take on e3, then after bishop takes a7, I have to understand that I should take with the knight or maybe with the rook, bringing my piece away from the center or just occupy an ugly position with the rook which can be easily solved later on, just going back with the rook and so forth. So I think I can still play d5 if I want. And yes, I do. As for central attack, uh, that's why hoax x. Uh, so I still control the e4 pawn. So if d4, I just take on d4 and then e4 is hanging. So white wasn't ready for this central attack. That's what I mean. And Patrick GMT asks the same. So I just take on d4 in that case and take on e4 with the rook, avoiding forks or something. Okay, now of course I take with the rook, but taking with the knight is also playable. <clears throat> if I take with the knight, e d5, I just take with the queen. Yeah, I will just take with the knight here. So e d5, I take with the queen to protect e5.
Yeah, now goes to e3, the move that I actually underestimated slightly. Now it's not that clear where to put my queen. Probably c5 is a square. Before, I guess, it's not that dangerous because I just take on c3. But d4 is a move, yeah. And so most likely it was better to take on a7 with the rook, but we'll see after the game. So now I have to focus on the board because I simply have no time. All right, let's go away. And come back quickly to c6 with the knight. Centralizing. Before it is too late. And rook to e8. Now we can say that black is coordinated. But, well, white also has a good position. And I missed the rook e4 resource <coughs> PT. It was much better than rook e8. So actually, rook e4 attacking the queen and pawn on a4 simultaneously. That's what I mean. This looks good for black. Okay, c7 is hanging, so I'll protect it. Also pinning the knight e3, I believe. It's not possible to move the knight now. So it also gives me some time for active operations, just like this one. Now activating even more. And for example, queen here attacking c3 now. Okay, let's go there. b3 is under attack. Not sure what should I do here. Let's just do something like this. I think I can afford it because I simply have a great centralization, but I missed something here, right? Or no? No, I guess everything is fine because of the back rank. <laughs> so knight takes d1, rookie one with the checkmate. Look at this. Very nice, right? So let's analyze this. That is a very interesting game and I think potentially very instructive. So as for the opening stage, everything was more or less like uh, in the main line. So here, I guess uh, it's better to play h6 just to uh, wait until white takes on e6 because if white takes on e6, then f takes e6. And um, well, this pawn isn't bad controlling d5 and f5 squares. So leaving this knight d2, uh, with uh, no perspectives, no typical perspectives, I mean, after this maneuver into e3 or something. Uh, also, after f takes e6, f file becomes open, and uh, I have the target here. My bishop uh, attacks f2 already, and now after f takes e6, my rook can potentially join this attack. So, um, after uh, h6, the main move is rook to e1 again. Um, and here I can play rook e8, so I already control uh, g5 square. And after bishop takes e6, rook e6, and knight to f1, we have, uh, well, the same situation, but my bishop is still on c5, which I don't think uh, is very bad. Um, on the other hand, there is already a sort of threat of d4, but I think I can still play d5, because if d4, then e d4, c d4, and bishop b4, tempo move, attacking the rook, and uh, next move will be something connected with this capture. Um, why can try e takes d5, in which case, uh, at very least, uh, without even calculating anything additionally, I just take on e1, knight takes e1, and let's say queen takes 
d5 attacking d4 so i have a better pawn structure this isolated queen's pawn is quite weak uh, potentially this bishop c1 will be also very bad so going to e3 simply protecting it so i guess black is doing very well here so d5 here and if uh, we follow the same scenario like in the game something like bishop e3 okay it's the same position but with the extra tempo which is different right so i don't have to uh think of what to do with the a7 i just take on e3 for example knight takes e3 and i can even think of playing something like d4 but in this particular case i can probably just take on e4 so it's not very good for white to play this way so white has to do something else which gives me some freedom right um okay uh what else um if white uh, does something else for example plays uh knight to f1 i think i can still play d5 so bishop takes c4 uh just like azure mist says uh is not very interesting here because i don't win anything but white will control the center better after that i mean this exchange so the d5 is under serious control so it's very hard for me to come up with the active play after that but even this position is completely uh fine for black uh, but i think d5 is just better so d5 ed5 all right i take with the uh, taking with the knight is playable probably but taking with the bishop is just natural um setting mm, up this control of uh, e5 square with the rook and the knight controlling a lot and now bishop c4 becomes um, an interesting option and probably a positional threat because in this case uh, we can notice i already played d5 so i will have pawn majority on the king side so this is also good for uh, black i guess the best move for white is something like b4 bishop goes to a7 uh, and now uh, something like bishop e6 rook e6 and knight to c4 uh, creating different threats like bishop e3 uh, with the idea of uh, getting to e3 with the knight, uh, maybe b5 at some point. So also interesting thing. So position should be more or less balanced uh, in this case. For example, I have an interesting choice. Uh, maybe even b5 deserves attention just to stop the pawn on b4 and to prevent b5 and so forth. So it's a typical position for Italian. Bishop a7, rook to e1. Here I should have uh, switched my plan, I think. So instead of rook e8, just to play h6 again, and then to try something connected with the knight e7, knight g6. But um, according to my experience, if you want to play this knight e7, knight g6 maneuver controlling f4, uh, it's better to do this without bishop e6, just to do this uh, as fast as possible. So when the bishop is still on c8, you just play knight e7, knight g6, and then probably even something like c6 followed by d5. That is the plan. Mm, so this rook e8 doesn't look very good, so it takes, takes. Knight f1 already preparing uh, bishop to e3 or maybe even bishop to g5. So I played h6 and now bishop e3. d5, bishop takes a7. Mm, and maybe I should have captured with the rook just to avoid these complications in the center because now if e takes d5, uh, I can probably simply take with the knight. So e5 is not hanging. My knight remains on c6 as you can see. And, uh, well, I can go to f4 then, and rook on e6 is also very flexible. It not only protects e5, but also uh, is ready to join the uh, counterattack whenever I have uh, anything tangible on the g-file, something like this. So knight takes a7 was uh, another inaccuracy. This forces me to take with the queen, and now knight gets to the center with the temple, right? So that is actually uh, what I missed here. Mm. I wanted to go away with the queen somewhere like d7 in fact but then after knight to c4 uh, we can notice that e5 is attacked three times that is a problem um if i play knight c6 okay knight takes e5 and uh, i'm a pawn down so most likely i have to play e4 but i'm just not ready for these active operations with uh, so badly placed pieces and that is about our topic today. So my pieces are simply not well coordinated for uh, central activity. So my knight should be on c6, the rook should be uh, on d8 or e8, or at least ready to go there quickly uh, to be able to play e4. Because if I play e4 now, then after taking on e4, uh, I have to take here to uh, regain the material. Now knight takes e4, all right, rook can go to d7 and white starts kicking me, simply. So that is the result of uh, not prepared central activity just because the pieces are not coordinated. I mean, black's pieces here. So 
that is what I wanted to avoid. That's why I play queen to c5. And here, after, uh, let's say, knight c4, I was ready to try something like e4 even. Uh, because now uh, it has a tactical foundation. So knight on c4 is hanging, so maybe it gives me something. Um, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. If I play e4 here, there is an intermediate move b4 attacking my queen. Um, but now I can put my queen on d5, right? Still attacking the knight on c4, so there is no d takes e4. And now attacking d3 as well. So if knight goes away to uh, e3 with the tempo, I can simply take the d3 with my queen. That's the idea. So yeah, probably tactically I'm more or less fine here, but something crazy starts after knight d4 attacking my rook, and position is really not that easy to evaluate. Uh, maybe white is better, maybe not. Yeah, this knight d4 makes a great sense, by the way. If rook goes away, then after b4, uh, let's say queen to d5, there is knight to e3 with the tempo, because now I can't take on d3, and so on. So white actually gets uh, a lot of uh, extra time here. So maybe this deserved serious attention just to put the knight on c4. After d4, I think position becomes just balanced. Uh, and after queen d4, queen f8, uh, I just use this queen on d4 as my target. So now I quickly come back to the center with my pieces. Here I could have played rook e4 immediately attacking the queen and pawn a4 and simply grabbing it, I guess. But after queen g3, okay, c7 is also handy, so maybe it wasn't that promising anyway. So rook e8, uh, the move I played, rook d3, rook e4, queen g3. Now queen e7 protecting c7, the point is that uh, the rook on e1 is handing, so if I play something like knight f5 attacking my queen and pawn g7, I just take on e1, and after knight takes e1, uh, well, I can simply take on e1 and then protect uh, my pawn g7 with the help of g6, so I have extra minor piece, I guess, it's just winning for black. So knight f5 wasn't a threat, but well, after b3, I played this knight h5, and I was already very happy. So as we can see, all of a sudden, black starts uh, activating all his pieces, and, uh, well, white has some vulnerable uh, spots on the queen side. Uh, but uh, the idea here, why these pawns are so um, accessible, just because of uh, the difference in coordination, right? So black has extremely coordinated and active pieces here, while white occupies not very good positions, especially this queen uh, h2 is completely out of play. There's a big problem for white. So most likely um, after d4, it was better for white to consider taking on d4 uh, with the knight. I don't think that cd4 is a good idea creating a isolated pawn, but it can be also playable because my knight is out of play and white has some extra time to play d5 and activate the pieces and so forth. And uh, after knight takes d4, uh, the rook is under attack, so white gets some additional time uh, to activate the pieces further. And the queen can occupy a much better position uh, if compared to what happened in the game, I mean. So after, let's say, rook goes away somewhere, maybe to e7, I don't know what is the best square, because on e7 it will be vulnerable uh, because of this knight f5 constant threat. So after that, I would have occupied b3 square with the queen, just attacking b7, or maybe f3. f3 is also very nice, because from here the queen attacks this, and white, as we may notice, uh, actually prevents me from playing knight to c6, because now if I go back to c6, then knight takes c6, and my pawn structure is being damaged, which is bad, all right? So that was much better for white, and that's why uh, taking on a7, was a mistake for me. So I should have captured on a7 with the rook, saving the knight in the center. That's the idea. Okay, and the final stage was uh, somewhat uh, quick because of the time trouble, mutual time trouble. So we both were in the time trouble here. Uh, c4, well, um, probably it was better just to play rook to c1, uh, keeping the pawn on c3 because at least it doesn't give me additional uh, squares, because now I, yeah, have very active setup. Uh, and probably here I missed something simple. Mm, maybe I didn't. So rook takes e3, looked very tempting, but after f takes e3, queen takes e3, and king somewhere, even to f1. I didn't see a follow-up. This knight, unfortunately, uh, protects everything. So maybe I'm blind, you tell me. 
Uh, that's why I just played g5. Well, I needed the move and I'm not sure it is the best one. Uh, but, uh, well, at, at least I actually uh, keep attacking and protect knight on f4, uh, which may be or maybe not very important here, but looked very good. Because if queen goes back to g3, let's say, I have some tactics like queen takes d2, followed by knight uh, e2 fork when knight takes on d2. So queen g3 wasn't that dangerous. If there is something to g5, uh, happening to g5, I just played to f simple f6 move protected additionally. So I saw this can give me some time to think maybe. And I played this rook c2, queen to d3 and rook to d1, which was a complete surprise to me. Uh, and by the way, I had a simple move, queen takes b3, but of course queen d1 is much better because now uh, there is a very uh, nice checkmate, right? Here, here, and here with the check. All right, so let's go further. Uh, another game, uh, let's play Azure Mist, accept, accept. So let's play e4. Okay, so today's analysis is somewhat uh, detailed. Uh, I guess it's fine, guys. If it's not, just let me know. I will do a quicker analysis. But I think it is instructive. So we learn something, right? Learn something new. A6. So trying to come up with a knight or setup after e5, let's say. Okay, I usually play bishop c4 when I do something blitz related, because it gives me a chance to play quickly uh, after a4, this positional line, quite rare one. Uh, usually when black learns bishop c4 setup, he's prepared for uh, castling short immediately, so called Fisher souls in attack. And this bishop c4 is, uh, I mean, not bishop c4, but bishop c4 in a connection with the a4 is kind of a surprising thing because I prevent b5 and actually play positionally without sacrificing the material. All right, queen c7, attacking my bishop. I can protect it with the queen e2 move. I can simply go away with the bishop immediately. So I will just go away to a2. Why not? Bishop b7, castling. And bishop to e3. So that is my setup. I complete the development of my minor pieces, and then at some point I just start pushing my f-pawn. The idea is to activate bishop a2, to force opening of the diagonal after e6, e5. Bishop d7. Okay, since uh, black play queen c7 immediately and force my bishop to a2, I think I don't need to play queen e2 here. So usually I put my queen on e2 to prepare rook to d1. Uh, in this particular case, it feels like I can come up with a quick f4, f5 if I want. And if the knight gets to a5, then I will play queen e2 protecting c4 square. Okay, let's try this f4 immediately here. Knight takes d4. Okay, let's take with the queen. Queen is super aggressive now. Here in the center. And now I guess I should complete my plan and play this f5. Let's try it. Now e6 is under attack which should force 
black to play e5 now. And diagonal a2 g8 becomes open. And also d5 square is here to try to occupy it with the knight or with the bishop. So this is the main idea behind why it's set up in general. So main strategic foundation. All right, knight to g4 is a tricky move because not only this knight attacks the bishop, but also h2 pawn. And here is the queen on c7, so potentially there may be something with d5 attacking h2, creating sort of a checkmate. I have to be very careful now. Um, but I think I can simply take on e6 here and win the pawn. Because in this case, if I take on e6 and black plays d6, d5, I have bishop e3 to f4, just protecting my h2 with the temple. So let's take it. I guess I don't blunder anything. Knight takes e3. So now I can even take on f7 with the pawn and I will have two extra pawns after that. So why not? Check. And queen takes e3. There is no checkmate, right? Queen g7, there is nothing. So let's take on e3. And two extra pawns. I think it is a good result. Well, I lost my light, sorry, dark squared bishop, but well, I have two great pawns and the king on h8 is almost checkmated. And this bishop f6 is kind of provocation because uh, it feels extremely tempting just to take this bishop with the rook. And then to bring my queen somewhere to h6 with a crushing attack. With a crushing attack, I believe. More or less crushing. <laughs> More or less attack. <laughs> oh. Let's try it. Of course, it wasn't necessary, but... I have a feeling it should work somehow. This or that way. So queen h6 looks very good. It's creating a sort of a checkmate on f6. Rook to f1 was probably slightly more accurate. But okay. If black is greedy and wants to keep this material balance at the moment, well, I will benefit. So now f6 is hanging. But I also have in mind just to lift my rook to the h file somehow and check my black on h7. So, ed5 is a move, knight e5, bishop d5, almost everything is very good looking here. I don't know what is better. If I take with the knight, there is queen takes f7, unfortunately. So I lose my pawn f7, which is very important. So, I'll take with the pawn to have d6 ready. Still control f7, but this may be just a stupid idea, in fact. So Azure Mist usually plays in this style, so he actually provokes something and then there is no checkmate simply. <laughs> so you just realize all your sacrifices were not that great. Okay, D1 is controlled, so I can take on F6 and I think I have to take on F6. Why not after all? Just increasing my material compensation for a missing exchange. There is an interesting idea at some point to bring the rook to g6 and then to g8. But first, I have to deal with the threat of a checkmate, right? So let's play this. Okay. 
how to finish it I don't know so let us simplify the second rank is controlled there is nothing for black I think it was better for black to take the queen because now I actually improved the coordination of my pieces black no longer has serious counterplay and my queen is ready to occupy a1 h8 diagonal at any moment for example after this move I believe I create a very strong threat of queen f6 I'm not sure if there is a defense if h takes g6 there is queen h6 checkmate Let's remove this because it feels like rook f7 is the only defense. I might be wrong though. Yeah, it's just lost because let's have a look. If, uh, for example, rook d8 goes away from the d. Uh, from the back rank, I have additionally this rook g6, rook g8 idea. There's a queen f6 thread, and if takes here, then queen h6 checkmate. Uh, so it's lost already. I think after queen f4, queen f4 should have been played. Uh, and so uh, black is not checkmated at least, but position is still very bad. So if I want, I can simplify uh, this with the help of rook g4 and rook g8, which is absolutely not possible to... Uh, prevent. Uh, after that, I have two extra pawns, right? So technically, winning position. That's the idea. Um, so what was wrong? What was wrong? This knight g4 was a blunder, of course. That was the uh, reason why Black started struggling seriously. So after f5, e5 uh, was a move, uh, and after queen to d3, which I was going to make, um, actually protecting e4 pawn still controlling d5, additionally controlling b5 square, and intending something like bishop g5 with the exchange on f6 and then occupation of d5 square. Well, here, I guess, in this particular case, black has an interesting counterattack after b5. So after a takes b5, a takes b5, and knight takes b5, there should be uh, something for black. There should be counterplay, I believe. Uh, so, at very least, there is something like bishop takes b5, queen takes b5, and uh, queen takes c2. And I can see a lot of hanging things in uh, white's camp. So, the c4 is hanging, and it is attacked twice. Uh, there is potentially something connected with the back rank. For example, if white plays like queen b7, uh, there can be something like rook takes a2, rook takes a2. Then queen e2 attacking the rook and the bishop simultaneously. And uh, if rook goes away here, then... Well, maybe it's okay, <laughs> in fact. So if the check, then bishop goes to g1. But okay, it can be just uh, potentially an idea. Uh, maybe white is white is good here, I don't know. Let's see. Maybe after knight b5, black uh, doesn't have to take on b5 and can do something else like queen b7 attacking the knight b5 and pawn e4 simultaneously. Yeah, this can be an interesting counterplay. So knight is under attack now and the pawn on e4 as well. If knight goes back to c3, black can still take on e4. If knight takes on d6, there is an interesting play after this, this, and bishop takes e4 attacking g2. And uh, I believe this is annoying for white. Yeah, so c2 is hanging, f5 is potentially weak, b2 is hanging as well and so on. So black needed the, the active counterplay here, 100%, but not that active like knight g4, because uh, this, uh, despite looking very interesting, in fact, loses material. So now if d5, the idea I was talking about during the game, attacking h2 with the knight and the queen, um, I have simple bishop to f4, resource, defending everything, and now d5 is hanging as well as the queen on c7. It's a very bad position for black. Uh, and after knight takes e3, ef7, and queen takes e3, of course, everything is clear already. So white simply has two extra pawns for no compensation. So bishop f6, uh, yeah, was a good try. And rook f6 wasn't necessary. So 
I could have played almost everything here, including just uh, an interesting move, bishop b3, improving the position of the bishop slightly, uh, and uh, hence improving the coordination of my pieces. Because now, whenever black plays something like b5, let's say, um, my bishop is no longer in this ugly position on a2, so it is not hanging, and uh, I can use the a file as well as black. Also, I protect a4 pawn additionally, so there is no idea like bishop c3 followed by bishop takes a4. Uh, my knight is free to move anywhere at any moment, uh, and c2 is also protected. So, uh, position of the bishop on b3 is very good here. Uh, White can feel very safe about his queen side after that. So rook f6 was just to try to uh, prove that uh, this weakening of the king side is fatal. Uh, but I'm not sure I actually came up with the correct order of moves and uh, actually uh, chose correct squares for my pieces in general. Maybe rook to f1 was slightly better than uh, immediate queen uh, to h6. Because in this case, if, for example, black sacrifices the exchange back, uh, I can put my queen on d4. Very nice, right? Just attacking f6 and d6, I have extra pawn and much better pawn structure and probably simply winning position. So after queen h6, there was an idea of playing this rook f7 and my queen, um, in my opinion, is not that great if compared to d4 position. Uh, but after queen e7 and rook f1, well, I felt already very good, but then d5 happened. So this move, I actually underestimated. Mm. Yeah, I wanted to take with the piece, of course, but if I take with the knight, let's say, which looks great after, let's say, bishop d5, bishop d5. This is just amazing for white. The bishop is just a monster in d5. But if uh, after knight d5, black chooses something else, uh, it's not even close to a clearer position. At least it felt like during the game. For example, queen takes f7 here, and what? So the point that queen goes to g7 next move, protecting everything on the king's side. I probably still have uh, the advantage and probably knight to f4 should have been played. The move that I didn't see when I just calculated it uh, uh, during the game. So attacking the queen now with the bishop a2. If queen goes to g7, I simply take on g7 and play knight to e6, taking on f8 next move and I have a bunch of extra pawns here, so it should be winning position. And if queen takes on a2 instead, then knight to f g6 check. Um, but this is probably not that good as I wanted. So now if knight f8, rook f8, black simply has extra minor piece. If I play knight to e7, the king can potentially go to... No, f7 is bad because of this. And this looks like a winning position. So king has to go back to h8. Yeah, and unfortunately, I don't see a follow-up here. Unfortunately, my back rank is also very weak. So just imagine if the pawn is on h3, I can try something like rook takes f6, just increasing the pressure. But here, rook f6 leads to just queen a1 and game over. Yeah, so it's unclear, unclear position. That's why I took on uh, d5. I thought that... Uh, I have to actually save my pawn on f7 because it is really cool. And after queen d6, rook takes uh, f6, queen e5, and h3, preventing uh, any sort of uh, checkmate uh, along the back rank. I think what already was quite good. So bishop c6, just queen f4, yeah. And the last chance was probably to take on f4, but that is also not uh, very promising. And after that, why just simply win? Okay, so uh, let's go further. Um, yeah. Next one, next one is uh, Redix. Let's play Redix. Very tough opponent, and black pieces. So in the vast majority of cases, I play against Redix exactly with black pieces. Do you know what is that? Karma or, do you know, just a coincidence. But that is always like that. And Redix always just changes openings, which is interesting. Okay, F4. So 
King's Gambit. Let's react with the Falk Bear d7 d5. So Black also tries to be active in this line. In the vast majority of cases, it's been simplified quickly in the center, and we have a position without pawns in the center, except for probably d4. So d4 usually remains the only pawn in the center. So bishop c4. Now I have a choice between bishop e7 and bishop to e6. So what to choose? Yeah, let's start to bishop to e6 in this game. And I guess this is inaccuracy because I can play knight e3 now. And that is basically the idea behind bishop e6 to use the vulnerable position of the bishop on c4. Maybe it's already a mistake for white. So I can take bishop c4 next move if bishop takes e3. And I just simply attack a lot here, like c6. Now white will be forced to lose the time. So now I can take on e3. I think that is my best move. And instead of attacking pawn on e3 already, white just moves the bishop, which gives me some extra time. So how to use this extra time? Just to play bishop e7? Well, it's probably possible. But look, I can try even something like g6, bishop h6 here, which looks completely crazy, but maybe it makes sense just to protect the pawn on e3. And also limit the activity of the bishop d3 somehow. It's a rather experimental thing, but I guess my bishop will be not that bad on h6. The only issue is, of course, the f6 square, but I don't think this is a serious weakening. Let's try it. Usually in this pawn structure, uh, black has a problem with h7, b1 diagonal. Uh, so g6 is also a useful move in this sense. All right, now I just put my bishop on h6, protecting this great, just gorgeous pawn on e3. I don't want to give it up so easily, that's what I mean. So probably it will be anyway captured later, for example, after attack from the knight. But right now it is still alive and this is very good for me. After bishop e6, knight g5, queen g5 was possible. It's wife of x. g5 was controlled by my queen, d8. So a request from live chat from Kramnik student, especially to play Simba. Okay. Next, next game will be against Simba. <laughs> And I have a feeling that I played against Simba on chess 24 and it was really hard. <laughs> All right, knight went to e4. Now sort of attacking several squares, including f6, c5, and so on. d5 is still controlled by my queen and the bishop. So I think there is nothing wrong with this move. Just continuing the development and covering f6 square and c5 simultaneously. And at some point I will play f5, f4 if I will have a chance. Most likely it should be a good idea for me. For example, now I can't see why I should avoid this possibility. Bishop on e6 is hanging, okay. And if I play queen e7, 
there is knight g5 potentially unclear but i think i have to be good even there so let's play queen e7 all right so position was simplified slightly i no longer have pair of bishops and diagonal a2 g8 is potentially weak. So there is a queen c4 possibility attacking my king and so on. But I don't think it is really dangerous. I mean, there are still resources for me to protect my king normally. So I guess I'll just put my queen on e7. Attacking the knight on g5 now. All right, my king goes to h8. Now I want to kick this king, sorry, queen. The king as well, but it's not possible right now. So what I can do here is just deal with this queen. It's very active. And potentially quite dangerous. Well, at least annoying, right? Controlling his diagonal. So now, how to play in this position? Let's bring the rook to the center. Activate it. So I can't say I have a perfect coordination right now. Still need to do something with this bishop. And I guess it's a good moment to bring it to a slightly more natural position in this particular case. It's no longer that needed on h6 anymore. Now it's much more useful here, controlling e5, preventing knight to e5 move. All right. So now, let's bring the knight to the center as well. Now if white plays c4, d4 becomes my target. And bishop is already on g7 to attack it. That is very important. Right, let's, let's attack g3. I think g3 is just a weakening of the position, a serious one, by the way. How is white going to protect all these weaknesses? I'm not sure. Let's take it. And D takes E5, Queen takes E5 simply. And it's over. And this is also a serious blunder. Just go here. And I think I have just an extra minor piece and simply winning position. And it's over. It's over now. The last thing is not to be tricked with this knight f7 check. So I put my queen on c7, not on d6, to control f7 at the same time. Now I attack this. Okay, rook f3, let's take this. I don't know, queen d7, just an accurate move. Takes. Pins. Yeah, the last resource is his queen. So I think after that, he will resign. No, yes. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at what happened in this game. So e4, d5, all this uh, is very 
popular way of playing this. I'm not sure that d4 immediately is the best way for white to play this because this immediately we can c4. Um, as far as I remember, bishop c4 immediately is uh, one of the most popular choices here, as well as bishop b5 check. But okay, d4, knight takes d5, control an e3, bishop c4, bishop e6, creating a threat of knight to e3. So here, it is very important to protect the bishop this or that way. Uh, the one possibility is to bring the queen to e2. Another possibility is just to play bishop b3. To start with now bishop is intending and white also creates sort of threat like c4 and um, in which case um, it's doubtful if black can play c5 but it can be probably an interesting idea just to undermine the center uh, knight to e3 can be also a resource as well as like i don't know moves like knight no knight to e3 is probably not that cool but simple like c6 should be interesting as well, just to cover d5 square in advance. And if c4, it's no longer that dangerous. So immediate c4, by the way, leads to bishop b4 check. And uh, if something goes to d2, I will have a better access to e3. Let's say after bishop d2, I just take it. And then my knight gets to e3, which is very nice. So c4 should be delayed as well. Uh, and after castling, black has to think of the next move so maybe bishop to d6 is okay just to protect that four pawn and after c4 let's say the knight goes somewhere uh maybe to e3 is still playable maybe just to f6 so position is unclear but that is just like the way of playing it kathleen i believe is just a serious uh mistake after 93 bishop b5 c6 i do useful moves that i wanted to do in any case uh now getting uh some template right and here i decided to play g6 i believe there is nothing wrong with this idea because i have f7 completely protected moreover uh knight e5 or something like that is not that simple to do because d4 is still hanging um, so i mean i have the time uh, to complete my development here and i don't give white a chance to grab this pawn so easily so now if white wants to take this pawn he has to play something ugly like knight to d1 and it's still uh, not a guarantee that uh, knight will take it because I can play something like rook e8 and I believe that knight takes e3 will be a mistake after, say, you know, almost any move with the bishop away from uh, the e-file, mm, including bishop g4, but no, bishop g4 is just too much. Uh, maybe just, you know, bishop to d5 attacking the knight but this gives white a chance to play knight e5 okay let's forget about it uh for example bishop to c8 and now if knight goes to e5 there is some like queen d4 attacking just uh everything here so the knight on e3 the knight on e5 black definitely wins something in this position so even something like that but well if we imagine that white uh manages to take on e3 uh, if compared to just a standard development of the bishop to e7, let's say, well, white kind of spends even more time to accomplish it. So, in any case, it doesn't really matter, pawn e3 remains on the board or drops. Uh, I think this idea makes a big sense, just to play g6, bishop h6, to uh, complete the development quickly and at the same time to force white uh, spending the time <clears throat> on regaining the pawn. After knight e4, I just play knight e7, and I think I'm already very close to winning the game. So f5 was not the only move here. Of course, I could have started with queen e7, just an accurate move, covering everything and protecting my bishop in advance. And by the way, queen e7 was a good move because now if bishop c4, I just take on c4, and knight on e4 drops. So I control everything after queen e7, and I'm ready to play f5 if I want. But even f5 was a guy, so... After all this, as we may notice, white had just a couple of checks, but black had a well-coordinated pieces, very nice pawn on e3, and this position looks very, very attractive at very least. All right, so let's go further and play Simba. Uh, it was a request. Here is Simba 8. Let's accept. And I play with white pieces. Let's try it. So, Sicilian defense. What is it going to be? Dragon. 
Okay, so here I usually play this way. Bishop e2, preparing castle in short, avoiding any sort of activity, well, trying to do everything to prevent black's activity. So rook e1, preparing bishop to f1, because bishop on e2 kind of uh, not very good anyway. And it's better for me to have the bishop on f1 to control the e-file better with my rook from e1. Now I just go away with the knight from d4 to control d5 square better. So now my knight, pawn and queen control d5, preventing d6, d5 move. Now bishop to f1. And my general idea here is to put the knight on d5 sooner or later. So after b5, there is usually a choice for white. White can play a4, b4, knight d5. So just undermining the pawn and then putting the knight on d5. Another idea is to wait a bit with this and to start with bishop g5, which is also interesting, which is also playable. Um, I will try bishop g5 in this game. Exert an additional pressure on e7. It is an indirect pressure, of course. So once I play knight to d5, and for example, there is an exchange on d5 and e4 takes d5, well, my bishop will be placed very logically here, attacking e7. Okay, bishop to e6. Now I guess I can play this knight d5. Uh, there is no problem with that. But after knight d5, bishop d5, e d5, there can be knight b4 attacking d5. This may be a problem. All right. Let's try to be careful and think twice. It's knight d5. Of course, knight takes d5 is not possible because of e d5 attacking both the bishop and the knight. But bishop d5 is playable. e takes d5, knight jumps to b4, attacking my pawn on d5. In which case, I just take the knight on f6 and play c3 trap in the knight. All right. No problems with this. Let's do it. Now I have a positional threat of taking on f6, by the way. Just damaging the pawn structure at some point. Now I have a pair of bishops in addition to other advantages. Okay. Um, now, I have an interesting choice between queen d2 controlling a5 square, also preparing something like a4 because there will be no b4 move after that, and a simple c3, which is quite typical here in this pawn structure, just to cover diagonal and to prevent the activity of bishop g7. Do you know which move will be uh, better? I guess both are very good. But we have to understand that black potentially wants to put the knight on c4. So maybe it makes sense just to solve this problem like immediately with the help of a4 move. Uh, and uh, after b4 to try some like a5, even just separating pawns a6 and b4. Mm, don't know. A lot of interesting continuations for white here. And not so much time to make the best possible decision because it re requires a, a good calculation here. And when you play blitz, of course, you don't have a chance to calculate a lot at least. So a4 just undermining b5 pawn. If this pawn goes to b4, 
then c4 is no longer that simple for this knight e5 to occupy. So I actually deprived the knight e5 of this supporting pawn b5, making this outpost on c4 not that simple to get. All right, now I think I have to take, and b5 is my target, which I can attack with an id4 if I want. But first I will take this, and now knight to d4. Interesting. So b5 is hanging. Also c6 is my potential target. d5 can be captured, but I think in this case I take on b5 with the bishop. My bishops become quite active, especially my light squared one, which can be potentially dangerous for black. Knight takes d5, nevertheless. All right, to take on b5 with the bishop or with the knight? That is an interesting question as well. Because if I take on b5 with the knight, I attack the knight d5. But does it give me anything? I don't think so. Okay, let's take with the bishop. Queen c7. Let's play this move. I believe it should be a very good one. I just protect the knight in d4. Uh, I actually um, solved the problem with the pawn c2. It's no longer hanging, so everything is more or less protected. Black also has everything protected now. Okay, I'm not sure in the power of this idea, but let's see if I can do this. No, it's not correct because bishop d4 is a threat. Yeah, f4 was a very bad move. That was a very, very bad move. All right. That was a serious mistake. Just amazing mistake. So I had in mind this bishop c6 maneuver followed by bishop d5, damaging the pawn structure, but forgot about tactical, tactical features of this position, so... If there is no bishop c6, of course, f4 is just anti-positional. Think. Very bad. This gives me some tricks, but not more than that. All right. Oh, that was just bad. That was just bad. Okay, in the mutual time trouble, we made a lot of mistakes.
Mm, okay, very interesting game. Very interesting game. So somewhere, uh, I mean, at some point, something went completely wrong. So bishop g5, bishop takes, and maybe a4 to start with wasn't the best move to make. Maybe. I'm not sure which one is the best. Uh, okay, a4 was a, all right. I mean, this looks very natural. So if b4, I just play something like a5, I separate these pawns, they are my targets. c4 is not so easy to occupy, so white should be better. But after queen d7, I guess this uh, whole concept with a takes b5, rook takes a8, and so forth was not correct because uh, I just left with <clears throat> not so active pieces. What could I do instead? I think knight a5 was the correct move here. So just control the c4 additionally, uh, preventing knight c4 and so forth. Being ready to occupy c6 at any moment when the knight e5 doesn't control it. Maybe even sometimes when the knight still controls it. Um, what else? Uh, if b takes a4 now, I have simple c4, just supporting my d5, having this pawn here, and then taking on a4. I think this is very promising position for white. Uh, if, for example, f4 and knight to c6 doesn't give me more. This can be also an interesting idea for me. Um, in any case, b takes a4, I don't think it is dangerous. Also, what should have been analyzed? This not an e5 is kind of not very good, but since I don't have the pawn on h3, I can't really play f4, I think, because of this knight g4 is quite, quite dangerous, annoying thing. So a b5, a b5, all right. That was a mistake, I think. Takes on a8, takes here, and knight to d4. That was probably another inaccuracy. Uh, but looked very good. Okay, knight took on b5. <clears throat> I took on b5. Queen to c7. So maybe here I missed something. Maybe here I missed something. For instance, knight to c6 was an interesting try, just attacking the knight d5, pawn on e7 potentially, and targeting this guy with the idea of uh, knight takes c6, queen takes d5. Now the knight on c6 is hanging, if the knight goes away somewhere, I just take the rook, so probably rook to c8 is the only move here. Mm. And I saw this uh, during the game, but uh, I wasn't sure I achieved anything. Because my b2 is hanging here, and... Uh... If I take on c6, queen c6, queen takes c6, rook c6, rook takes c7... Uh, I'm just not in time because after rook c2 there is a threat of a checkmate, right? Um, check here. I don't have the time to play bishop h6 or bishop e7. So, no, I can't play bishop h6. Sorry, I just still protect the c1 square. So the same blunder, by the way, uh, that my opponent did uh, during the game later on. So he forgot about the bishop on h6. Controlling c1 square. Sorry, this line doesn't make sense. So after this, rook e7, bishop b2 should be played. Uh, creating this g7 square for king. And uh, feels like black should be fine here. Yeah, I can't see a follow-up. So that's why I decided not to do this. But maybe here I should have played something like c3. But after e6, black again should have some counterplay. Then d5, next move, black is fine. So knight c6 doesn't work here. All right, I played c3, but after e6, the knight on d5 is protected, which is already very good for black. If I start with the f4 here, I mean, right now, I guess black can do the same, just knight to c4. These knights are simply very good. Knight in d4 is hanging. So if I play bishop c6, there is bishop d4 followed by queen c6. Bishop d4 check, of course. Uh, if I play knight c6 here, there are so many tactical things like queen b6 check. Again, attacking my king and taking on b5. So it can't be good to play f4 in general. Yeah, so maybe knight d4 was too early uh, in this position. Maybe 
it was better for me to wait a bit uh, to do something else. Maybe to, to start with c3 just to see how it works. If knight goes to c4, then queen e2, something like that, just targeting this one. You know, but in general, as I said, I don't like the idea of playing uh, a takes b5. So most likely knight to a5 was a correct move, just covering this c4, being ready to occupy c6 at any moment, and uh, yeah, preparing a bunch of other things. So now I can easily occupy d2 if I want at any moment, because I no longer... Uh, I'm no longer afraid of this knight c4. That's the point. All right. Yeah. And so uh, by the end, of course, yeah, black made a serious blunder somewhere here. So that was already bad for me, of course. And I believe there are a lot of different ways for black to play this. Uh, something like queen b6. At almost any moment could be a very annoying thing. For instance, here instead of rook b8, just queen to b6. Not only attacking d4, but also bishop on b5. I think white is simply lost. So rook b8 gave me some chances, but these chances were good only for you know this 30 seconds something uh, time situation on the clock. Play king h1, knight went back to f5, took here. Uh, now created a threat of a checkmate. So here, actually, I already have some counterplay uh, based on this trick. So f6, I expected this move, but this also makes position quite uh, open. Mm, and I can try something like rook to d1, attacking the knight. And if the knight goes away, I just take on f6. And after queen b2, I just take on d5. I have extra minor piece, but I didn't have a chance to uh, convert it quickly, unfortunately. So I just played several normal moves, as I thought. By the way, h3 is uh, a mistake because of g5. So g5 was possible. Uh, instead of h3, I should have played something like bishop f4, obviously. But it's obvious only if uh, you have enough time to think and there is no time pressure. So rook e8, rook c7, uh, creating some threats. So, of course should be a winning position for white, but uh, yeah, I made several mistakes here, so that was okay. But here after king e6, I just dropped the rook and then lost some time. In any case, interesting game. Uh, let's go further. So, several games more. Let's play uh, Zargisian. No, seven minutes plus two is too much. Uh, let's play uh, Basim Ismail. Five minutes. And white pieces again. Artur Navarovsky also joined joined this stream. Very nice. You're welcome. So knight of three. E6, D4, knight E4. And bishop D3 is the main theoretic move here. All right, B5. I should like to undermine the pawn here. Just immediately challenging the position of black on uh, the queen side. And like c3. So black makes only pawn moves, as we can notice, uh, which leads inevitably to the situation uh, when white has a better development. And in this case, it makes sense to try to open up a position with all possible means. In the center, it is very hard because, well, this pawn structure kind of guarantees that there is no chance for white to open up central files quickly. But on the side, it is possible. Uh, and I actually already started. 
Bishop a7, okay, I think I can take this pawn if I want. But this can give black potentially some tempi after knight c6. Is it a good idea for me to do this in general? Or just to wait until black captures himself? On the other side, pawn is a pawn. Why not to capture it? Yeah, let's do it and take it. Now I can just play b5, right? b5 looks looks a good idea. And bishop takes. a takes is also interesting, but I think it's better to keep this normal pawn structure without big problems, without big issues. Moreover, the bishop on b5 is also placed not that bad. It was not clear if there were some perspectives on diagonal b1, h7. On b5, it definitely makes sense. It covers the queen side naturally and exerts some pressure on this knight c6 and so on. Okay, queen b6. I can play bishop e3 right now. It's just a good move. But I think I will start with castling, which is also not that bad. We'll see. Maybe uh, bishop e3 will be played later. h5 so black kind of mixes ideas from uh, different opening lines i don't think that h5 makes a big sense here because it attacks nothing absolutely so let's keep developing the pieces bishop f2 after a takes b5 no i, I wasn't worried because knight on b3 kind of protected my rook on a1. Maybe I blundered something else, but the rook on a1 was protected. So it wasn't that dangerous. g5. All right, this is crazy. I will take this pawn on g5 with pleasure. All right. And come back to e3 now. Queen c7, let's take it. So I have two extra pawns and no compensation, nothing. Nothing for black. How to complete this? How to finish this game? So yeah, I can see g6 very weak. And it will be nice to bring the queen there. At the same time, it's interesting to prevent black's development somehow. There are so many different ideas, in fact. For instance, I can do even this. So it takes the c6. Simplifies the position slightly because this knight could have been potentially slightly annoying somewhere on e5. And creates a new weakness in black's position. Now queen to d6, attacking c6 and controlling c5 square, intending to occupy it with the knight sooner or later. Knight e7, all right. Now knight to c5 looks very good, but then king goes to f7, protecting everything. So maybe knight to d4 is better, just attacking everything here. Now let's try knight to d4. E6 is hanging, C6 is hanging, and so forth. So it gives me C6 pawn. Should I take it or not? I would say, why not? Bishop here, okay, now there is a check, which is also very good, because now I get one more pawn. Do I need this pawn? I'm not sure. 
But again, the same question helps me to make a decision. Why not? <laughs> All right. I need my knight in the attack. And to protect g2, by the way. Because the rook just went at g8 with probably the idea of attacking my g2 later. So I'm going to bring my knight to f4 just to prevent all this stuff. Yeah, position is lost, in fact. Well, it was lost for a long time. What's going on? One more piece? Come on. White's pieces are well coordinated. So I think there is no counterplay for black in such a situation. Okay, they're very close. We are very close to winning this. Now queen. Yeah, time to resign. So, um, I think that against bishop d3, b5, is playable but not the best option because uh, if compared to knight c3 line uh, where b5 is actually absolutely normal and uh, here black has a concrete object of attack after b5 uh, so that's uh, after b4 the knight is forced somewhere and then e4 becomes a target and so forth after bishop d3 this b5 is kind of uh, not so clear to understand uh, because black attacks nothing here. Yes, this is a preparation of the bishop b7, quite a typical move. Uh, at the same time, it is just a target for me. So I yeah, start undermining this pawn, then create this pressure. And the point is, uh, if it takes, then after knight c3, I have very simple development, very quick development. And this open b file, I mean, partially opened, uh, can be also a problem for black. For example, if bishop goes to b7, at some point, I can bring my queen to b3, just attacking it. And once the queen goes to c7, let's say, there are so many uh, different ideas, uh, including just bishop to f4, for example. And if queen takes, I just take the bishop. The rook is hanging. If e5, I just take here. Queen takes e5. Queen takes b7. So something like this. So all of a sudden, uh, white has a direct access to black's camp after this opening of the position. So I would have avoided this b5 idea 100%. So b4, c3, bishop c5 gives me additional tempo. So knight b3. Uh, now if bishop goes away, uh, if compared to immediate development of the bishop and cb4, bishop b4, well, uh, doesn't feel like black achieves something. I mean, um, after bishop here, cb4, bishop b4, and bishop d2, um, I can justify the position of the knight on b3 easily because it can get to F a5 square very soon. For example, after this exchange, let's say I take with the knight, queen takes is also good. I can bring my knight here very soon. And if you play a5, for example, after knight c4, just start attacking this pawn. So queen d2, there is also a problem with the d6, by the way, and so forth. So look at the development, look at the coordination. So white simply has easy access. So bishop a7, I just took on b4, and after that, well, there is simply no compensation. There is nothing to discuss after after this uh, um, transformation. So I simply have extra pawn. My bishop on b5 is invulnerable. Pawn a4 supports it. Uh, black still has a lot of weaknesses. So this d6 is a problem. Uh, this g7 is potentially a problem. Uh, dark squares in general are very bad uh, in this opening line. But here, after this opening, the position on the queen side, I simply have 
um, a better access once again to these squares and so forth. So it's just a very bad position. Um, let's go further. So uh, let's play chronic student. Let's play chronic student e4. c5 knight f3 d6 d4 all right so what do we have here all right again this let's try it again one more time so probably chronic students is well prepared so against uh azure mist i played bishop a2 in this similar situation against chronic student i'll play queen to e2 Okay, bishop here. Now king to h1. And rook e8 immediately, most likely preparing d5. Most likely preparing d5. So if I play f4, let's say d5. E D5, E D5, Knight takes D5, Knight takes D5, Bishop takes D5. Uh, I don't think it is very dangerous. So yeah, let's try F4. Might be wrong though. Okay, and B4 just definitely preparing D5 now. So let's go away to have e5 as a response. And d5, okay. So I definitely go this way. Because when you already played f4, of course, ed5 is not a move. This weakened e4 square will be just a great weakness. And this isolated pawn on d5 is not a real one. It's not a real weakness, I mean. So black has enough resources to protect it. Okay, so we have a typical situation now. Uh, I have to prepare f5 for at least sort of attack there on the king's side. Mm, and I have to improve the position of my knight c3 somehow. Knight c5 is coming, that is important. She most likely... I don't have the time to place it like knight d1 followed by c3. Can I play f5 right now? That is an interesting question. So if I play f5, there are two captures. Knight takes e5 and queen takes e5. So if knight takes e5, I can probably play bishop to f4. Bishop d6 leads to something like knight to b5. Yep. So after f5, queen takes e5 is most likely the most tested move. f takes e6, f takes e6, for example, queen to f2, rook to f8. No, this doesn't look great. For white. I'm not prepared for this sort of assault, so maybe rook to e1 to start with, or just rook f3, rook h3. Yeah, this is an interesting try. So rook f3 followed by rook h3. Let's do it. So I want to bring my queen to h5. <clears throat> now, how to continue the attack? 
Mm, rook to g3 most likely. <laughs> so I just want to provoke some weaknesses. And g6 is probably not possible here because of some tactical tricks. And h6, hence Henning. So king h7. All right. Now pawn on f7 is weakened. So maybe I can try something like f5 here after all. Now let's try f5. He takes f5. Knight takes f5. Doesn't give me anything. I'm not sure. So maybe my rook should be somewhere on f1 already. Mm. Not clear. Absolutely not clear. But there is something like bishop h6 after that. So potentially it can be interesting. So let's try f5. All right. Rook can get to f1 just in one move, so I don't think the absence of the rook defines the position. The absence of the rook on f1, I mean. But okay, I think anyway, it's not, not enough. Okay, here I wanted to try this. So now I have a sort of bishop takes g7 with a checkmate, so gh6 is forced. And now just queen to g4, creating sort of queen g8 checkmate. If bishop goes away somewhere, just queen g7 checkmate. Lost, already lost. Okay. Yeah, interesting. Interesting game. Interesting game. Just a straightforward attack became possible. Uh, so e5, knight goes to d7, rook to f3. So I didn't see anything after f5. I thought that I would have something interesting after f5. Uh, just for example, uh, knight takes e5, bishop f4. Uh, for instance, if bishop d6, there is interesting trick knight b5 takes, takes, and queen goes away somewhere, it doesn't really matter where, I just take on d6 and then take on e5. Very good transformation. So, uh, after bishop f4, however, there is bishop f6 possibility, and yeah, everything is more or less uh, fine for black, I guess. But there is rook to e1 but then e takes f5, so unclear. But even better, I think, just to take on e5 with the queen. And I'm not sure there is anything for white. Probably just nothing. Because, yeah, if I take on e6, f takes e6, so black is ready to come back with the knight to f6. I don't have threats on the king side. I mean, size of threats or something. Uh, so it's not dangerous, after all. That's why I played rook to f3. So, just preparing this rook h3, uh, perhaps Andre says something about king h1 move. Yeah, I will tell you slightly later. So knight to c5. And rook to h3. I have a feeling that something like simple g6 could be interesting here. Or, I don't know, bishop f8 is also good. Queen h5, h6, rook to g3. Yeah, and here computer says that king h8 was necessary. Uh, I can't really get what is the difference because after king h7 and f5, aha, it suggests e takes f5. Okay. 
yeah, so here I also didn't see anything concrete. Uh, I realized that queen e5 is probably bad because of queen takes f7. Attacking the rook and creating sort of bishop takes h6. A lot of other threats, so it doesn't look good. Uh, what else? Yeah, so e takes f5 remains the only move. So in this case, it says bishop takes h6 followed by g6. I wanted to take on d5 maybe probably doesn't give me anything so I wanted to check this knight takes d5 let's say knight takes d5 bishop takes d5 attacking f7 but probably just g6 solves the problem and uh, I didn't have anything concrete here so black is more or less fine yeah mm. king h7 f5 all right he takes f5 but yeah knight b3 is definitely bad just bishop takes h6 and that's it. But the point here, there is no g6, of course, because I take with the pawn. And after g h6, queen g4, decide. Yeah, interesting idea. Interesting idea. So rook f3, don't know. Maybe not the best move, but I didn't see a better one. So my uh, initial uh, plan was just to try something like knight d1, intending to play c3, which is very typical for this pawn structures and to bring the bishop to c2 but here black is just uh in time playing knight to c5 maybe that was still uh an interesting play for both sides like uh, i can play c3 now i guess but this looks ugly uh so most likely i have to do something like knight f2 yeah probably this way and after knight b3 uh, cb3 uh, i just bring my knight to the king side and hope for attack so we have sort of french pawn structure here which makes this bishop c8 very bad. Uh, but do I have anything without the light script bishop? I'm not sure, so probably nothing serious. Well, at least it will take a lot of time to achieve anything uh, on the king side. So black's position is, in my opinion, safe and absolutely playable here. So um, as for king h1 move, there was a question in chat. So what the point behind playing king h1? Well, it's a typical thing. When you wanna play f4, you should understand you weaken diagonal g1 a7 so that uh, all sorts of checks like from b6 later on may become possible and potentially dangerous that's why usually it makes sense to start with the king h1 prior to play an f4 that's it okay uh, so let's play the last game for today uh, it will be september uh, and well i will be happy if you come tomorrow, uh, the same starting time like today, tomorrow I will try playing uh, Gambit Openings. It will be just a Monday edition, uh, which means different sorts of experiments. Especially hard it will be tomorrow to play with black pieces because, well, it's usually not so great to sacrifice something playing with black right from the start and so forth. But, well, who said that it should have been easy <laughs> for me? Will be hard. Knight to f6 uh, gives me a chance to put the knight on e5. So let's go to d5. So that is also the line, of course, but I guess knight to d7 is more popular choice. I mean, not this knight f6, but knight e7 controlling e5. How about a day when viewers can play using an engine? It makes no sense, come on. It's not interesting. To play against the engine <laughs> so I have the engine installed on my laptop so I can play against the engine at any moment it's interesting to play against normal players just human beings yeah. Queen d3, e6. All right. So bishop f4, bishop d2. There are a lot of different continuations. Let's stick to simple bishop d2. 
bishop e7 and let's say just c4 to start with control in d5 square and intending to put the bishop on c3 if necessary knight e7 careful careful be careful andre because there is a threat of knight e5 grabbing the queen on d3 after that so let's protect it with the f4 move castles okay i can castle as well and i think castling long side is not that bad a5 all right so now i have to think how to attack on the king's side so i definitely need to bring my knight g3 somewhere then to play g4 g5 something like this at the same time sorry i don't want to play knight e4 because after that knight e4 queen e4 knight f6 is possible all right let's start with this move in any case, it should be useful. Improving the position of the bishop slightly. And this one, well, I can take on c6, I guess. I'll do this. So I think it was a blunder. Now let's take on e7, grabbing the bishop. Take some b5 or just c5. Take some b5 is completely playable, I believe. But c5 looks slightly better because it keeps position closed and also gives me a pass pawn. So I will play c5. Also, it limits the activity of black pieces slightly. Yes, it gives up d5 square, but it's not the most important thing here, I guess. So after knight e5, I just put my bishop on d2. Then I play knight e4, g4, g5, something like this. All right. And position remains close on the queen side, so that my king is safe. And this extra pawn should decide at some point. By the way, this c5 controls d6 square. So I have an interesting maneuver knight e4, knight d6 at some point, but probably not now because there is a threat of knight f2. If I play knight e4, there will be f5 move attacking my knight, then knight goes to f2. So I will start with queen to f3 move, preventing knight f2 and attacking the knight on g4 simultaneously. And maybe even switch to another plan, something like f5 looks interesting as well. But h5 is another blunder, I believe. I can just take this pawn with my knight. Now, now this knight on g4 is hanging. F5, I believe, was better because now I have no reasons not to play g4. And this looks very good. Yeah, I'll just play g4. So now look at this knight on h6. It is definitely misplaced. It's out of play. And g4 was, in any case, my plan to push my pawns on the king side to come up with the attack. So to win the game. With the help of this attack at some point. And what is important here are my pawns b2 and a2. I mean, even if black plays something like this, I have b3 keeping position close. Same as about b3. If b3, I just play a3 and position remains close. So it's not possible to uh, open files on the queen side. 
And that's why one should avoid moves uh, on the side where your opponent attacks, not to create hooks. So if pawns remain in initial positions, it's much harder for opponent to do anything there. Just like that, okay. Just play a3. I don't want to grab this pawn, of course. Just slight prophylaxis going away. From this knight c5, dc5, queen c5, potentially. And now it's time to regroup my pieces slightly and start the decisive attack there. So knight g3 control in f5 square. Wanna play g5, h5, and so forth. Okay. So let's create a sort of knight takes f5. Maybe this will provoke g6. And if g6, then h5. And I open up a position. Look, Vex knights don't even get to d5. There is no route. Because there is no realistic route to this square coming quickly. Okay. That is the last trick, but it is another blunder. No. So, lost position, and uh, the main reason why Black lost this game was, of course, a series of blunders which started after b5 move. By the way, after knight c6, I expected something like uh, b takes c4, because in this case, if knight takes d8, then cd3. My knight is heading and I have to go back uh, to c6 most likely. And uh, well, black has some chances after uh, bishop d6. I would even say that I like black's position more than white's one because white has a lot of vulnerable spots here. So um, after b c4, uh, I wanted to try what? Just a second, knight takes c6. Yeah, b c4. I wanted to uh, play either queen c4 or maybe knight takes c7 followed by queen c4 but if i take on e7 well black has a perfect position so just rook c8 queen somewhere let's say i don't know even where and black has an enormous compensation for a pawn probably again black has a very good position maybe even close to winning one so i would have probably captured on c4 immediately mm, so bc4 queen takes c4 queen is under attack and probably it is forced to go to e8 where after I have a chance to continue with the f5 move, uh, which is much better than to take on e7 because you can see what black has as a compensation for it. Yeah, so um, potentially interesting is to pin my knight here with the rook c8, in which case I think I can still think of playing f5 or something like that, or maybe queen b5 to start with. Or queen a4, maybe queen b5, slightly better. Just attacking the queen again and forcing it to e8, where after just to play this f5. But there is bishop d6 with, with a counterplay. So I don't know, position is unclear. So maybe b5 was actually normal. <laughs> maybe it was okay. But definitely not this way. So after queen e8, I just take here, and after c5, you saw what happened. So position remains closed. And uh, there is no play along the C file, like in the lines that we discussed. So you have no attack. Well, I, I, I'm not in a rush simply preparing my attack on the king side. And the rest was not that hard. Okay. So thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for being with me this evening. Uh, your support matters. And uh, well, I can feel your support. Very nice that you attend my shows. Comment a lot. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, uh, you know uh, where to find it, there is a short link just below, uh, it is bit.ly slash Mastrovsky, 
Um, don't forget to like this video if you uh, really liked it and don't forget to share it if you think that uh, it was instructive and somebody will also benefit from watching it. Uh, wish you a good evening and uh, hopefully see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.